Alrighty folks, welcome back. Our project today is this little Dixon lawn tractor. And even though it snowed yesterday, it will eventually be spring here and we're going to have to mow some grass. So I guess we better get this little hot rod fixed up. Uh, there's a few minor issues with it, nothing too serious. As you could hear when I brought it in, it doesn't run quite right. The RPMs fluctuate pretty badly. So unless somebody snuck in a performance camshaft, I think we're going to find out that that's a fuel problem. So we'll have to clean the carburetor, I'm sure. This tire here, left front, keeps going flat. That needs to be patched. Uh, the deck has uh, a belt worn out and it needs new blades. So this is a Kohler vertical shaft engine. Optimistically rated at 20 horsepower. I don't know how much I believe that. So I'm not sure how much Dixon has to do with this lawn tractor. I suspect very little. I think Husqvarna is involved with Dixon uh, maybe they own them or something like that. So I suspect this is probably a rebadged Husqvarna or you know some kind of a rebadged cheapo mower. Somebody in the comments section will tell me. But I doubt this has anything to do with the Dixon company. So here's the model number. D20KH42. So I guess that's 20 horsepower and 42 inch cut. Anyway, pretty standard, you know, super cheap homeowner grade lawnmower. It's pretty decent. Well, there's the carburetor down there. Well, no fuel pump on this machine. It's all just gravity fed, so we'll pinch that off. The fuel line, I mean. Pull that out of the way. Now, carburetor should already be loose. Probably should have cleaned this before I started, but you know, live and learn and all that. Voila. So this is a Walbro carburetor and it only has two adjustments looks like. So one for the idle speed here and one for the low speed circuit here. And the high speed circuit must be permanently jetted. So we'll see if we can get it apart. So this gizmo right here is a shutdown solenoid and it basically shuts the fuel off when you shut the key off so you don't get that dieseling effect where the engine wants to keep pulling in fuel and then the, the heat of the exhaust manifold or whatever will cause it to burn. You get what they call dieseling. It's 
where the engine runs without spark. So that looks really good actually. That's like a self disassembling carburetor. And that's a classic gotcha. So you see what they did. They put a, an ear on this low speed adjustment. So that's all you get is about 270 degrees of adjustment on that jet. Which means we cannot take that out to clean it. So all we can really do is grind that off if we want to clean that out. Or we can try it. Try and do it without taking it out of there. I just don't know how successful we'll be. So there's not a whole lot we can do with this carburetor. I mean, really, all we can do is just try to spray through all the passages, make sure everything's clean. So there's our fuel inlet. And then on the high speed circuit here, we can try to blast through this thing. What do they call that? An emulsion tube or something like that. So that's clear. And there's a passage here. Should be the other end of that. Okay. And there's one down here. Seems clear. And then there should be one right here. And that's clear. That is really about all we can do with it, unless we want to start chopping things apart, which it feels like the problem's in the low speed circuit, so it may be in our best interest to go ahead and grind that ear off and take the low speed jet out. Yeah, this is annoying. I mean, the only reason they do that is for emissions. You know, they don't want you to richen the thing up, I guess, and kill all the polar bears or whatever. But All right, 10 seconds with the carbide burn. The low-speed jet is now serviceable. So we can crank that guy right on out. We can make sure that's open. Pretty decent. Cool. Okay, I don't really see any other problems. I'm gonna go blow those passages out real good with air, and then we'll put it back together. Wish I had one of those ultrasonic cleaners like what Musty has. That would be really nice. Well, I guess we'll put this back together. Didn't really find anything wrong with it. It's a few things I'm not in love with. The little rubber tip on this needle here isn't the greatest. It's starting to kind of pucker away from the, the metal body there. And the bowl gasket's not great, but I think we can make it work. Well, I shouldn't have even touched it. I broke the rubber part off the end of that needle, so we're going to have to replace that. Okay, I'm back. Took a trip to my local small engine repair shop, picked up a rebuild kit for this carburetor. So it comes with everything that we're, we're going to need, including a new needle for the float valve. Which would be this little guy right here. And it does have a rubber tip, it just they put graphite on it so it looks metallic, but that's the that's the part we really need. Now, technically speaking, uh, the gaskets are also a bonus. Uh, technically speaking, we should remove this Welch plug right here. There's some little ports or tiny little passages on the inside that really can only be cleaned by removing that Welch plug, but I'm not going to do that. I think we're just asking for trouble at that point. 
this carburetor is so easy to put on and, and take off that I think we just put it back together and then if we have problems you know with whatever's behind this plug we can deal with those later Carburetors are so simple now. That's it. Okay, we'll put this back on. And I actually looked on eBay. You can buy an entire Chinese aftermarket carburetor for less than what I paid for this rebuild kit. So, figure that out. I'm sure the quality is terrible, but you know how good's it really got to be. Okay, carburetor installed. I installed a new fuel filter. There is no fuel pump. It's just Isaac Newton bringing the fuel down to the carburetor. Old school. So let's see if it runs any better. This lawnmower is like a unicorn. It actually has all of the safety switches still functioning. So you gotta sit on the seat, push the pedal. Okay, carburetor fixed. And I get questions from time to time about how to adjust a carburetor. And I'm not an expert about it or anything like that, but I would say my best advice would be don't overthink it. Almost all carburetor adjustments boil down to adjusting the low speed circuit for best idle and adjusting the high speed circuit for most power. And most of these newer carburetors anything built within the last let's say 30 years they're not adjustable on the high speed side at all and a lot of them now are not adjustable on the low speed side either so other than setting the idle speed there really is no adjustment on the newer carburetors but on the older ones that's how we did it we would set the the low speed screw for best idle and then you know you have to put it under a load take it out and drive it or use it or whatever and adjust the high speed for the most power well, I picked up a new set of blades for the mower deck. I was going to sharpen the old ones, but I'm kind of thinking that might not work. So I don't know if their yard is made entirely of rocks, or if these things have a zillion hours on them, or what's going on, but yeah, they're definitely going in the scrap pile.
Yeah, I think that'll work. As long as they don't hit each other in the middle. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be really close. That'll work. We'll make a big racket when they first start it up. Need to clean the deck out at the end of the year too, but... Well, that's not my job. These are supposed to be mulching type blades too, so see how they hold up. So they got this thing all jacked up. It's supposed to be tight there against the engine, and then it's supposed to, well, it's supposed to be all the turn it slightly and then pull it out like so but when I turned it slightly the whole thing came loose looks like it made it might have been doing that for quite a while so okay I think that's done draining so we can try to fix this so in case it wasn't clear the this whole apparatus here actually screws into the side of the block and when I tried to open it up, the whole thingamajig went spinning on me, like so. Filter off here. Oh, of course. You gotta be kidding me. Good grief. It had an actual Kohler filter on it. but that's original. And I really should have cleaned this thing before I started fixing it. Which normally I would never clean anything ever. But this could be an exception. So this is the filter that I was given by the by the customer here. It's a Fram. It's a lot shorter than the other filter, but I think it'll go on there. Yep, okay. What is the point of this thing? So I'm going to pre-fill my oil filter so that the internet doesn't have a conniption fit. And I'll spill most of the oil on the floor. What a mess.
Okay, enough of that nonsense. Alright, what kind of devilry is this thing? Come on, Kohler, really? Alrighty, show you guys a little trick. Got these things here. They're called flexible spouts, made by Funnel King. And they're just these little rubber spouts that don't screw onto these oil cans. There we go. So now you got yourself a long flexible spout. What for not spilling oil all over the floor? So I don't know about you guys, but I freaking hate funnels. They're probably the most annoying tool in the shop to use. I'll do anything I can to avoid using a funnel. They fall out, they leak everywhere, they're always dirty, can't find one when you need one. Okay, that should do it. The oil capacity is 1.5 liters, 1.6 quarts, and I always use straight 30 weight oil, only the finest name brand oils. Uh, I'm sure some pedant will tell me that this is the wrong oil, but it'll be just fine. Now let's look at this tire. Okay, so all I see is the speed leaking a little bit. I don't know. Speed leaks are always the worst. Well, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not, but there's a pretty good gouge right here in the bead and right here in the bead. So I don't know if we're going to be able to overcome that. So I don't know. Put a little bit of bead sealer on it maybe and just kind of hope for the best. But uh, it's really tough with these tubeless tires. Really tough. The best thing to do would be to put a tube in it, probably. <laughs> oh, it smells yummy. Man, who thought this was a good idea? Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, that's some yummy stuff. Wonder. Wonder how bad this little puppy's gonna be to get seated on the bee. Just gotta be fast is all. So we do not want to pop this little guy in our face. Actually, hang on a minute. Hold on a minute. Just picked up a couple of these the other day. It's a torque wrench for your valve stem. I thought that was kind of cool. Okay, max inflation pressure 14 psi or one bar. 14.7 psi is one bar technically. But who's counting? Better switch over to something a little less grabby. There we go. Now. Well, there we go, folks. In goo we trust. Try new True Flate Tire Beat Sealer with convenient brush in can. Not a sponsor. Okay, it's been about 24 hours. Still have good pressure in our tire, so I think the bead sealer is going to do the trick. I'm going to just grease this thing real quick. Pretty sure the only thing that's greasable on this whole tractor is the front wheel bushings and the Spindles. Guess you better go out and do some do some test cuts with it. Make sure the blades aren't gonna come flying off and you know through the neighbor's car or whatever. So let's see if we can fire this hot rod up. The ergonomics are not great for a guy like me. I don't know if the seat's moved all the way forward or what the deal is, but I think we can make it work. So, here we go. Oh, safety first. Oh, she likes some choke. All right, folks, I think that's it. Got the little Dixon here ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna take it back to its owner and we're gonna move on to the next project. So why don't you move on to the comment box and tell me 
if you enjoy watching these kind of short sort of impromptu videos or if you want me to just wait until I have something that has a little more meat on the bone and you may be waiting quite a while because there just isn't a whole lot going on right now but I'm sure it'll straighten out before too long and we'll be back to our our kind of regularly scheduled video flow so I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time